All right, folks, Notorious Fig here. Gonna give a quick overview of the figs I'm growing. And I'm not gonna go through and name them all. There's far too many and uh, nobody has time for all that. So one thing I would like you to see is notice that these cuttings from this year were grown in a single liter form. And I'm gonna chop those down to about uh, anywhere from 24 to 30 inches to get a kind of a Japanese pruning technique and um, anyway, you're gonna see what these look like right now. They're pretty tall and pretty healthy and they have lots of fruit on them. Uh, that's one thing that's uh, kind of debated a little bit is um, whether or not uh, you can get fruit set from a first year cutting. And I had on most trees, I'd say uh, 80, 90% of these trees had fruit. And uh, first year trees are gonna be immature, they're not gonna be perfectly ripe, uh, although some of them seem to be uh, just perfectly ripe. So here's the fig garden. Uh, I got a little dirty pool. So these trees will get hit with sunlight from about 11 a.m. Uh, until about the end. So this is just one section of trees and they're all pretty tall, a lot of them you'll notice are uh, seven foot tall or more. There's a really tall black manzanita and Joel Noir. So let's go take a look at these trees real quick. These are self-watering pots. This is a great, great thing for figs. These are all very, very vigorous and did really well. All super tall. From the deck up there, they're still a good, uh, this Joel Noir is four foot taller than that. Single liter, not pinching, and there's uh, plenty of figs on these. You get at least a dozen or so. That's a Craven's Craving, late ripening. Uh, Joel Noir, supposed to be pretty late ripening, um, but there you go. Got a fig ripening on it and another one coming in. This thing is just absolutely massive. Uh, that's a criticism. If you don't pinch, you're gonna get nothing but growth, no fruit, but uh, these were first year cuttings, all of these. Little itty bitty um, nine inch or eight inch uh, cuttings. So let's look at some of the other fig trees briefly. Black Manzanita. I've shown that a few times, and that is a fantastic tree uh, fig to grow. They also enjoy me Gran from Dan Foster. It's a great fig, a little Tia Pena right there. So if you look at these trees, this also um, single leader, you can see how thick it is. So take that into account. Uh, I did get a couple off of this. I think it's gonna be a little bit variety dependent whether you're gonna get figs the first year. But uh, again, most of these were cuttings from January and I got quite a bit of fruit. Some of these, um, maybe 20% of them are air layers from last year, so not exactly cuttings, but you get the idea. Plenty of figs on these, just to show you. The yellow long neck, some fruits, Craven's Craving, Socorro Black has a lot. Now it's getting pretty late here. Um, some of these may not ripen, but we'll see. But I've gotten plenty of ripe figs off of these trees so far. Um, we'll see how they do. Next year you're going to cut them down to uh, 24 30 inches and then it's going to spread out. It's going to look a little more like that Delson Joami Grand right there. All right just going through to show you the rest of the trees. All these were trained single leader like before. Cuttings from this year. Or so grease. Constantine d'Algeri has a couple. They set pretty high, so I doubt those will ripen. St. Germain, uh, 
trained it's a single liter, but fig mites got it. And, uh, but it has some figs that should ripen and I've let some of the side growth um, come out of that one. Thermolito and uh, a couple of really good ones this year, uh, Figoin and Black Celeste. So Black Celeste is must have for anybody in a shorter season, rainy, rainy as well. So those are the potted fig trees for 2022. All right, just wrapping up the fig tour. I'm gonna to show uh, another quick little video on the in-ground trees that I have. I'm in Cincinnati, Loveland, Ohio, right, so, right on the border of uh, 6AB. These were planted in-ground this year. And uh, this is morning sun right here. So they get a lot of sun about at least five or six hours of direct sunlight and um, that's a uh, Teramo unknown or Teramo, Florea, Figoin, Green Macharinska and another Figoin that's in a five gallon pot sunken in. All right some more in ground this is Marseille Black VS and that was planted in ground this year from a pretty small tree. Let's go over to uh, this right here. This is Campanieri. I got this from Ross and uh, likes this one a lot. So the flavor is really very interesting, very good, and it's supposed to be pretty early. So we'll see. Uh, this yard, this section of the yard is a little shaded, and so I kind of have some uh, junky looking. Uh, mirrors from a bathroom remodel uh, reflecting back some light so got to get rid of those malta black this is from harvey and that's in ground as well and i plan to build some enclosures around here so uh, probably do a video on what i do and uh, put a little heat in there keep this above uh, 28 degrees so we'll see all right there's a few more um about six in-ground fig trees, Bertolino, Conde, Red Lebanese, Baca Valley, Sal Miguel Rocho, and a potted Bertolino as well. Let's take a look over here, Black Celeste, very popular this year, and Maro de Caneva, uh, difficult to get, highly touted by Ross, which makes it difficult. This whole thing is going to be enclosed in a um, for protection, and it's going to have the ambient heat from the house over the winter. So we'll see how those do in the spring. All right, we're going to finish up the in-ground trees. Um, Sister Madeline Green Greek, a little small one, didn't grow much, and died to the ground. Uh, Chicago Hardy died to the ground and it's grown up pretty well. And uh, this is what I'm really anticipating right here. This is Long Dute, French fig, Long of August. And it's starting to swell. So this is an early fig and it was about uh, 12 inches tall. And it um, survived the winter uh, with some uh, kind of bare bones protection, nothing too special. And it's grown um, three main stems and put on probably 30 figs and they're starting to ripen so when it's in the ground it's going to wake up later and uh, even the short season figs are going to take a while to ripen so they're starting to come in I just have to protect them from uh, rabbits I've been having so that's it that wraps up uh, everything at my potted plants and what I have in ground so we'll see what kind of protection I can do on these in-ground trees. I'm gonna wrap them up. Some I'm gonna give some heat and have some temperature sensors and uh, I'll do some videos over the winter about that. And we'll see what kind of uh, protection and, and uh, preservation of the wood for next year's season that we can do on those. All right, take it easy.